We just got in TV. Years, he was the biggest drug dealer in the projects, and people started calling him Felix the Cat Mitchell. As his business grew, he put together a crew of drug dealers, made up of mostly friends he grew up with. Felix named himself and his crew the 6-9 Mob, or M-O-B, which stood for My Other Brother. The 6-9 Mob's headquarters was inside the 69th Avenue housing projects, and the Mob ran that building as if they owned it. In exchange for his use of the building, Felix would give residents of the projects free microwaves, free food, and money, so the police were rarely called. But in case the police were called, Felix also hired kids to be the lookout around the projects, paying them $100 a day to yell out if they saw police cars coming. Felix made sure if you didn't live in the projects or you weren't there to buy drugs, you weren't getting in. This type of protection from outsiders helped him build his empire. First, he spread to other housing projects in East Oakland, then to other cities across the Bay Area. And by the time Felix was 23 years old, he controlled drug suppliers, drug runners, and drug dealers all throughout California. It's estimated that at the height of Felix Mitchell's reign, he was earning $400,000 to a $1 million a month in drug-related income. He became Oakland's first large-scale drug dealer to gain control of California's heroin trade. And he had a crew of more than 25 active 6-9 mob members who worked under him. Heroin, so that's crazy. I always thought he was, uh, I was under the impression that he was selling crack. It's crazy. From 1976 to 1983, Felix lived the life of a millionaire drug lord, spending millions on expensive European cars, flashy clothes, and lavish parties. And he had million dollar homes in Northern and Southern California. Felix also became somewhat of a local celebrity in East Oakland a hero to some people, as he regularly donated large amounts of money to local charities and community youth programs. But all of Felix Mitchell's money and notoriety also made him a target. For years, he was in constant conflict with competing drug dealers who wanted to take control of the Bay Area's heroin market. These conflicts turned into violent and deadly turf wars between the 6ix9ine mob and their competition. In 1980, there were seven gang-related killings in three days between the 6ix9ine mob and rival drug dealers. And you know what's crazy? I was just watching a podcast, right? And they was talking about that, uh, the, the war between Mickey Moe, I think Funk Town, and Felix Mitchell, the 6ix9ine video. It got pretty, it got, that war was pretty intense, man. This is what caught the attention of federal agents. And after a three-year federal investigation, Felix Mitchell was arrested. At his trial, the prosecution claimed Felix and his organization were behind seven years of bloody drug wars in Oakland. Felix was convicted of conspiracy to sell heroin and for operating a criminal enterprise and was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. And all his money and assets, including his home in Southern California, were seized. Five members of the 6ix9ine mob were also convicted and sentenced to 25 years. A year after his conviction, on August 26, 1986, three days before his 32nd birthday, Felix Mitchell was stabbed to death in his prison cell by a fellow inmate at Leavenworth State Penitentiary. Following Felix's death, his lawyers argued that all his drug convictions had to be reversed based on the law that a guilty verdict cannot stand unless the defendant is allowed to appeal their conviction. The courts agreed, and Felix's conviction was reversed. As a result, the government had to return to his family all the property that was seized in his arrest. Felix Mitchell's funeral came a week after his death, and it gained national news attention. Meanwhile, the man authorities believe was behind a decade of Oakland drug wars was buried today and Thousands of people lined the streets to pay their respects. The funeral procession included four Rolls Royces. Rest in peace to everybody who lost their life. Condolences to all the families, every all the parties involved. It's a crazy gang. Like I ain't gonna lie, a lot of the kingpins and 
niggas who was like having their way back in the days, they kind of like interest me. And plus, like back in the days was like a whole. It's like <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. The times we in now, it just seemed like a like <laughs> they talk about um. What's that shit called? Time travel. It seemed like we didn't time travel to a whole nother place. Like I ain't gonna lie, but. They stories and just the times it, it interests me, and I got to see it like a little glimpse of that shit. You know what I'm saying? I didn't get the, I wasn't, you feel me, born in the 80s or 70s and nothing like that, but I got to see a little small remnants of, you know, if y'all want to see the whole thing, go tap into Kelly Faces. They got a whole bunch of like little like mini documentaries about kingpins and shout out underworld podcast shout out mac shout out hustling the empire say ho say ho you can't be playing with that paper ho nigga need that yay but need it now and not later ho say ho you can't be playing with that paper ho nigga need that yay but need it now and not later ho say ho you can't be playing with that paper ho nigga need that yay but need it now and not later ho say ho you can't be playing with that paper ho nigga need that yay but need it now and not later Be showing all that fake ass love. Keep that shit away from me. Keep that fake ass shit away from me, nigga. For I explode on one of you bitch ass niggas, nigga. Yeah, but you can fucking be my waiter, ho. As long as you get paper, ho. Cause shit, that's what the papers, ho.